ראשון הדוברים, כאן יושב עוד מעט יעמוד, הוא עורך דין דני זיידמן, שידבר על ירושלים, עובדות, זכויות ועיתונות פוסט-מודרנית. עורך דין זיידמן הוא מייסד ה-NGO Terrestrial Jerusalem, הוא ארגון NGO, לא ממשלתי, שמטפל בניהול ויישוב סכסוכים בירושלים, ועורך דין שמתעסק בסוגיות פוליטיות ומשפטיות במזרח ירושלים. הוא בוגר אוניברסיטת קורנל, עלה לארץ ב-73, וגם קיבל תואר למשפטים מהאוניברסיטה העברית, ומה שהכי ריתק אותי, אפילו לא ידעתי שעוד יש אימפריה בריטית בימינו. חשבתי שכבר אין אימפריה בריטית, עד שקראתי שב-2010, רק לפני שנתיים, קיבל עורך דין זיידמן מהמלכה, מלכת האימפריה, המלכה האנגלית, את הטייטל, את העיטור of honorary member of the order of British Empire. <laughs> אז הבו, קבלו את בעל העיטור ונאזין לו. בבקשה, עורך דין זיידמן. אני לבוש בהתאם. I think I'll speak English with your permission, okay? Getting a sense of who speaks what. Um, I've been living in Jerusalem for the last 40 years, and for the last 21, uh, Jerusalem has taken up most of my waking hours. And I focus on anything that impacts on Israeli and Palestinian relations in the city. Um, as is the case with Israel in general, Jerusalem in particular is a Gan Eden. It is paradise for journalists. If you can't market a Jerusalem story to the press, you can't market Coca-Cola in a Hamsin. <laughs> on a good day, you can't spit on the Ben Yehuda small without hitting two diplomats and three journalists. Um, that makes us, who deal with this issue, very spoiled, uh, but it's also daunting. Um, the title of this discussion is Ethics or Human Rights or Politics. As far as Jerusalem, as I'm concerned, hafochbo, hafochbo, akolbo. Jerusalem is the primordial material of the book of Genesis. Elusid Rei Breshit. Uh, and it is clearly informed by issues of human rights. There is no more political place on the planet than Jerusalem. Uh, but it is larger than any ideology, including ours, Winky, uh, that pretends to understand it. That has a great impact for the press coverage of Jerusalem. Um, Jerusalem is so unique that in order to write well about it, it is not first a question of politics or a question of ethics. It is a question of fact. It is a tough city to get to know. And often, the passion about Jerusalem is inversely proportional to what somebody knows about it. Everybody on the planet has a, an opinion on Jerusalem. Follow the Twitter feeds. Not a lot of people know. Uh, about the city. And one of the things that I've discovered in dealing with Jerusalem is it is a very inegalitarian city in some ways. It's very egalitarian in one way. Everybody lies about it, Jews, Christians, and Muslims. Um, I think Shamir said that for the sake of Eretz Israel, you can lie. Well, Jerusalem you know, ex extends that exponentially. So for the reporter covering Jerusalem, um, telling a, sor a story simply in a way that's accessible to a general audience in Israel or abroad without being simplistic is extremely difficult. That existed 20 years ago, it's very difficult to find today. 20 years ago, Jerusalem was blessed with a cadre of reporters, both domestic and international, whose familiarity with the city certainly equaled mine and sometimes went beyond it. Um, you had uh, young people, you know, Nadav Shragai, who many years wrote for Arts and now deals with publicistica, with, with op-ed writing, has written one of the great books on the Temple Mount. Um, Hillel Cohen, who went on to do his doctorate, or Eyal Ruveni, or others, I can go through many, and, so, and it was not only the reportage, it was the people who were writing the op-eds. Um, Uzi Benziman, happened to be Teddy Kolek's uh, spokesperson. 
Uh, Meron Benvenisti, like him, love him, probably hate him, all of the above. Was deputy mayor of Jerusalem and knows the city well. Um, and you could say the same about many of the international correspondents who covered the city. My experience is the age of good reportage in Jerusalem is over in many ways, or at least very different, um, for many reasons, some of them having nothing to do with Jerusalem. Um, the, it, most of the bu international bureaus have shut down and used stringers in Jerusalem. Uh, there are almost none of the Israeli press, electronic, or newspapers that really have a Jerusalem reporter. I, I remember getting a, a phone call a few years back from one of the important dailies in the city by their transportation reporter. And she wanted to go and look at a major national project, which is controversial. It has Hebitim Lechan Lechan. It works all sorts of ways. The Eastern Ring Road. So I set up, I'll pick you up at Binyadei Oma, and then he said, okay, this is where we're going. He says, what do you mean, we're going into East Jerusalem? No, 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 no. I want to write about the Eastern Ring Road, but not go to East Jerusalem to see it. I said, but you can't. The Eastern Ring Road is in East Jerusalem. No, 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 no. I mean, what am I supposed to do? I find myself, the interest in Jerusalem has not gotten, gone down. I will get phone calls. I don't reach out to the press, but I get phone calls all the time. Uh, about a story. More often than not, the information is disinformation. And then you have a very talented, very intelligent reporter, sometimes Israeli, sometimes uh, international, and you start with ABCs. Some of these people, you give them a license guide and a seeing eye dog they won't, uh, and put them at Jaffa Gate, they won't be able to find their way to the Kotel. Uh, and in the absence of knowledge, uh, you report sensationally or you report you know, all the news that fits, we print. What's available, you print. Now, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm sounding, sound in my own ears like an alta caca, you know, mourning the loss of some sort of paradise. Uh, this, this void has been filled. It's been filled imperfectly in their new patterns, and I'm coming to the question of interactions between NGOs and, and, and reportage. It's been filled by the internet. Uh, reporters can access municipal plans, governmental plans, you know, et cetera. It's been filled by Twitter. There is more information out on Jerusalem now than there ever was in the past. There's less insight, less context, less understanding, but more, more raw data, and raw data in this case sometimes looks like raw sewage because half of the time you're talking fact and half of the time you're not talking fact. So there is an accessibility. You can find out, you know, in the two minutes I was sitting here but waiting, waiting before I got, I leached onto the Wi-Fi, I was able to find out uh, a number of things in press that I wouldn't have read otherwise simply by using a search engine, something that I do all the time. Jerusalem today is an aquarium. Nothing happens in Jerusalem without it being reported eventually. It's usually sooner rather than later. Finally, we come to the final way in which this has been filled, and it's been filled by a symbiosis, sometimes successful and sometimes not successful, between the community of NGOs and the press. NGOs monitor what, uh, you know, a certain area, whether it is B'Tselem or my own or Acre or uh, Temple Mount Faithful. NGOs are in a position to monitor things consistently, to consistently gather data, use that data, and NGOs are by definition with an agenda. By the way, so is the press. Um, it is very convenient for both the domestic press and the uh, international press, instead of having a reporter that will cover a certain issue to have one of their, you know, uh, for all purpose use in the home reporters, call an NGO and get the data. Some of the NGOs do their job well with integrity, rooted in fact, and some of them would rather make a point than be faithful 
to empirical evidence. My final point, and this is based on experience, when a good journalist, with or without the appropriate knowledge, but with the chush bakara, with the sense of being able to distance him or herself from the subject matter, will receive information from a good NGO. And a good NGO is not an NGO without an agenda, but an NGO whose agenda is, read, is, is um, rooted in credible empirical data, good journalism emerges. When a bad journalist runs across a good NGO, it's bearable. Um, but when a bad NGO, one that is putting out specious information, um, which is not subject to um, criticism, comes to a postmodern journalist with an agenda, Gerald Steinberg starts salivating. Thank you. <laughs>